Will I have access to the building after graduation to set up? Yeah, I mean, when you should be here, you know, until five or six or so. Because I have a feeling I'm going to be running in and out, back and forth. Also, do you feel like you are I'm going to stay overnight with the kids. I love this class, but I ain't stay overnight. Those guys are great kids. Thank you, Beth. <laughs> I was a man. <laughs> so, but also, I usually I stop in the place. Hey, but they do check my head. Those are good. Oh, okay. Hey, thanks. So probably yeah, stop in and make sure you it. Yeah, yeah. 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 we're short on volunteers from the morning. Is that even? Yeah, it's good. And then Careful, I don't know like, how early like, things have to be played out. <laughs> You're up here, I'm just going to let you know. I'm sorry, you're probably making all trouble. Well, I'm the night one. Oh, you're fine. Yeah, I'm going to go to the first one. Can we all be there? Do you have that? I think right now we have three volunteers. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. We'll do a nap time. I had some. Will you though? Will you? But anyway, It might be. Yeah. Okay. And so anyway, I just was kind of like to me, to me, to me, to me, to me, to me, to I got a cool thing. Do you love sugar or 
Uh, for the pledge, what do we do? To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Folks, all right, folks. I'll be assuming uh, the duties of uh, calling until we establish uh, offices for the meeting. So I pledge allegiance with Satan Garrett. Roll call. Anne Marie Anderson. Here. Courtney Kneifel. Here. Eric Ryan. Here. Jill Geske. Here. Brock Wright. Here. Joe Sam Flippo here. Brad Saransky. Here. Ashley Goodman Mason will be joining us after the concert. Uh, Deb Burnett. Here. And John Goodman. Here. Megan Johnston. Here. And Evan Jingerberg. Here. Public notice, public notice of this meeting in compliance with state statutes. Chapter 1984 was posted at the elementary, middle school, and high school, post office, and Unity Bank. I'm looking for an approval of the agenda, please. A motion. I'll second. Courtney with a motion, and Eric. Ryan? Yes. And, uh, Wright? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Yeski? Yes. Kneifel? Yes. Uh, next meeting dates, June 20th, 2022, regular board meeting, July 18th and August 15th. All regular board meetings at 6 p.m. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns about that, please let us know and we'll... Anybody at this point? Okay. Student highlights, we are moving to uh, the admin announcements area because we have a couple students that would like to present and they are at the concert right now. So we're hoping that they'll be finished with the concert by the time we get to the administrative announcements. And if not, I asked them if we could get them to come in June. And we probably are not going to get them to come in June. So <laughs> we're, we're going to see how it lands here over the course of uh, the next couple of hours. We'll see how it goes. All right. So we are to, at this point, we are looking to uh, uh, look at the board reorganization. As the district administrator, I'll preside over the, these proceedings until the board president is elected. And uh, I would ask for a, vo a voice vote unless the board member requests a roll call vote or secret ballot. Are either of those requested at this point? OK. So the election of officers will be as follows. We'll be president, vice president, clerk, and treasurer. Right now we are looking for uh, um, um, uh, a nomination for president, please. I nominate Brad Wright. Second. Motion was by Jill. And second was through Courtney for president Brock Wright. Any other nominations? Any other nominations? And any other nominations? Okay. Uh, oh, Wright? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Geske? Yes. Kneifel? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Motion carries. Brock Wright has, will assume presidential roles, which also means taking over the agenda. <laughs> How exciting is that? Thanks. Thank you very well. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, we'll move on to uh, Vice President. At this point, we'll open the uh, floor for nominations for Vice President. I nominate Eric Ryan. I'll second. Any further nominations? Any further nominations? Any 
for the nominations. See none. We'll proceed to roll call vote, please. All I got to do is try Anderson. <laughs> Gasky? Yes. Nightbolt? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Ray? Yes. Give him one. I'm so used All to this. I'm is. so used to this. Like, Give up the roll for one person. <laughs> okay. Now on to the clerk. Are there any nominations for the clerk position? I nominate Anne Marie. I'll second. Any further nominations? Any further nominations? Any further nominations? Seeing none. Roll call. Vote. Gasky? Yes. Kneifel? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Wright? Yes. Anderson? Yes. And now, if you don't mind taking over that portion, we'll get to that. That'd be fabulous. All right, we'll move on to Treasure. Any nominations for Treasure? I'll nominate Joe Gasky. I'll second that. <laughs> Are there any further nominations? Oops, any further nominations? Any further nominations? Seeing none, we'll roll call vote in our very please, Andrea. Kneifel? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Right? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Geske? Yes. All right, on to 2022-23 board appointments, starting with the CISA 10 representative for 2022-2023. Last year, uh, Brock assumed the role of uh, our CISA 10 representative. It essentially means asking you to go to one meeting a year and have conversations with the CISA 10 board if those uh, happen throughout the course of the year. Again, Mr. Wright was our board representative, and uh, Ms. Geske was the alternate. So if we have any nominations for that, looking for those at this time. I would nominate Brock. Right again? Yeah, I think he's good. I'll second. Do we have an alternate before we move to? Yeah, we'll need an alternate as well. Um, I can. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. So Brock is our alternate. Okay. So Brock and Jill as our as our nominees. Motion made by Eric. Eric. Yep. Seconded by Courtney. Courtney. Roll call vote never Eric, please, Henry. Ryan. Yes. Right. Yes. Anderson, yes. Geske? Yes. Kneifel? Yes. And on to the WASB delegate. So alternate. we're requesting uh, to, that the board uh, designate uh, someone to and an alternate for the for the January 18th to the 20th, 20th 2023 20, Education Convention in Milwaukee. I really hope that this goes this year, that it's going to be um, not a, a virtual experience. And I really think if anybody's interested in actually attending, there's a, it's, a, it's a really great opportunity for, for board members. Um, Ms. Knievel was able to do it last year, and uh, Mr. Ryan was the alternate. It can be done by appointment. We can do it by appointment, but if we want to have somebody available, if somebody's thinking about going, this might be a great opportunity to do that. So I don't know if that's something that you're interested I'm in. Still in the yeah. to okay. I'll nominate Courtney Knievel. Do we have an alternate? Do you want to be alternate again? Sure. Eric and Sasha. Okay. Yep. We have a second. I'll second. <coughs> Roll call vote. Everybody, please, Anne Marie. Right? Yes. Anderson, yes. Gaston? Yes. Knifel? Yes. Ryan? All right, on to committees. And <clears throat> if it's possible, I'd like to make a suggestion for these. And that suggestion would be to leave everybody as is. And the reason being because I, I feel we got a lot, well, we would probably agree, mm -hmm. we have, we've accomplished a lot in the last year or so, and I think that uh, everyone's kind of on the same page with this group. So I don't know if there's a way we can, if we have to write them all in, or if we can. Can we just approve as? Um, yeah, you can just do that motion to approve as. To leave everybody as is. Yeah, approve as 2021 22 representatives. Mm -hmm. If okay. that's okay with everybody. Yep. That's just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we have to do it, but I just wanted to. I motion that. I would Okay. Okay. Motion by Courtney. Courtney. Second by Eric. So this is for 22 23. Yep. Correct. Yep. And would be to leave it the same as 21 22. Correct. Roll call vote. Never hear please. Anderson, yes. Gasky? Yes. Nightfall? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Right? Yes. 
All right, on to general public address to the board. Seeing none, on to the consent agenda, which includes minutes of the regular board meeting held April 18th, minutes of executive session held April 18th, financial statements dated April 2022, approval of monthly receipts and checks, student activity account receipts and checks for April 2022, consideration of renewal of student accident and catastrophic insurance, and that would conclude everything on the consent agenda. So at this point, we're looking for a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented, please. A motion. Awesome. Eric? A roll call vote whenever you're ready, please, Anne-Marie. Yeah. Michael? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Wright? Yes. Anderson? Yes. All right. On to administrative reports and board of actions, starting with business and finance. Pages 34 to 44 house our bi-monthly board report. There, we're tracking as expected. You can see current year compared to historicals. Um, next month we will, or, in, or for a July meeting, one of the two, we will have budget adjustments to bring as we do each year, but it merely will be shifting dollars between, not an adjustment to the overall. So last month, I or last bi-monthly update, I had kind of a teachable moment for you. And so I have one tonight as well. It links though to the budget that you'll be reviewing in a couple of agenda items. So for now, if you just take a look at the original budget column, only you can look on page 34. And we're going to focus on those on the left. For example, you see 10R21 dash. And then you see 10R24 dash. Mm -hmm. Do you see those account numbers and then the mm -hmm. original budget numbers? So just keep those in mind. And I'm going to show you how we transition those into later budget documents that they do connect. You probably have already noticed it, but just another opportunity for us to build on it. So as of this year, we're trending as expected. No surprises to report. All right. Any questions? No questions. We'll move on to consideration of the resolution authorizing transfer of funds. In mind as well. This is a, this is a, always an exciting one in the spring, yes. or has been most recently. <laughs> um, and just a reminder, this is actually the the work of my teammate. Um, I just present for him since I'm here. But at your seats was a, a summary document, and these are the final figures available um, after we sent the. Um, good. Okay. okay, so just a reminder, the defeasance process is the prepayment on our referendum debt. So just mm -hmm. like with our home mortgages, um, if we can repay or, or, or prepay early, it creates savings and interest. And we've been doing this with our uh, referendum debt for years, and it's created savings. And this year's prepayment uh, was originally estimated a week ago at uh, $319,000 of interest savings. And remember, since this is related to our referendum approved debt, this is savings directly to the taxpayer because it's related to that debt. So it's really a dollars we don't have to levy later mm -hmm. in order to repay the loan. Nice. And so although it was estimated at 319,000 a week ago, one good thing about interest rates going up is our escrow will earn more. And so the actual savings came in at 327000 So what, that's Excellent. interest avoidance that we'll have because of this process. So and direct savings to the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. right. direct, direct savings, savings to the taxpayer. <coughs> yep. 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 And there's not penalties for paying off the loan early. Correct. So the, the defeasance process, good question. Um, if, if I can equate this to our home mortgages. So with our home mortgages, we really can prepay any time. Municipal bonds are typically set up, and ours was set up in a similar way, where you agree not to prepay for a period of time, and in exchange they give you a lower interest rate. And so the way to work within those parameters is to put the money in an escrow account, and it gets it off your books, and that escrow account gains interest, and then repays when the time is due. So that defeasance is the fancy way of saying escrow account to prepay. Great opportunity for our community and, and thankful uh, for all the people at Barry that uh, put this together. And so please thank your team for all the work that they've done on that. Yeah. 
So we truly, truly appreciate it, and so the taxpayers. So thank you. All right. Any questions regarding that? Do you have anything further? This point with a motion to approve the resolution authorizing the transfer of funds. I'll make that motion. Second. Jill and Courtney. And then roll call vote whenever you're ready, please. Ryan? Yes. Ready? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Geske? Yes. Kneifel? Yes. All right. Time to consideration of the preliminary draft budget for 22 23. I have a brief presentation for you before I begin. Animation and all. Nice. Uh, just in one spot. Uh, but uh, just for you, for your reference in the booklet, starting on page 47 is the draft budget document. And the teachable moment that I mentioned is uh, if you look, for instance, in, and I have these marked like A12, if you follow that. Do you see how that says 210 mm -hmm. and the one below it says 240? Mm -hmm. And the middle column says, uh, column C is our budget. You can match those numbers up exactly to the reports that we review on a bi monthly basis. So the, the, we report to you in the same level of detail that you approve the budget in. And so I don't, maybe you realize that before, maybe you didn't, but that's an important thing that all those connect as we go. So today we'll be looking at column D, which is our proposed budget for next year, which we know isn't final yet, but is a start for us to work from. So um, just a real quick overview of our budget. Just remember that this is our preliminary budget. It's our first look. Our fiscal year runs July to June, and so we're couple months out from the start of fiscal year, which is hard to believe it's coming already. But this isn't our final budget. Our final numbers don't come in until October. And so we have a three-step process. We approve this now, and this really just kind of kickstarts our year. And then for our annual meeting, which is in September, we bring back to you another budget in August, which has updated numbers based on hires that we know and all of, all of the additional pieces we have that we then that we don't have now. That gets approved, published in the paper, and goes to our annual meeting. And then come October, when we have the final numbers, that's when our district and all the districts across the state approve the levy and set the budget. So not final, but are our best estimates to date. Uh, so we'll continue to update you, and no surprises as we come through. So just a reminder, as we work through the document that's in your booklet, we use fund accounting and fund accounting, people who like regular accounting don't like fund accounting. I learned fund accounting, so I'm not as quite as good with regular. But essentially, we have buckets. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you missed it? Okay, wait, let me try it again. Oh, oh, oh. there it is. Oh, That's my okay, good. so each, thank you. There's more. <laughs> so anyway, um, so essentially each fund or bucket classifies our expenditures. So in your budget adoption format, we have our general fund, which is our fund 10, our main operations. We have our special education fund, which is our bucket for all of our special education costs. We have our referendum debt fund, which is our fund that repays our referendum approved debt. And so what the fund is, is just that area of dollars that we're working in. Then within that, we have revenues and expenditures. <laughs> And of course that differentiates, um, you know, is it revenue coming into us or is it an expense we need to pay out? And then finally in your booklet, how they're classified is the who, who's giving us the money or who are, what are we, um, who are we paying it for? So in the case of our sources, that would be our revenue. Is it coming from the federal government? Is it coming locally, coming from the state? And then in terms of expenditures, that's, is it going for instruction? Is it going for support services or is it going for others? So as we look at the document the, that you approve, it actually subdivides it very clearly in these fashions. So for this year, we are budgeting within the funds here, two, four, two, four, six, seven funds here. Um, we no longer have fund, if, if we no longer have fund 60, but 73 is also budgeted, but according to DPI in the GASB accounting guidelines, it's not included in there, but we do use the fund 73 portion. 
The main two funds are our general fund and our special education fund. That's where a majority of our expenditures go, and that's actually where the most detail is reflected in your documents as well. We do have other accounts. Our old booster club accounts, activity accounts are in Fund 21. We talked about our referendum approved debt. That's repaying the loan for our referendum projects. Fund 46 is where we're saving for the long-term facility needs. Remember last month we talked about that 10-year plan. Last year we budgeted for Fund 49, which was the end of our referendum projects. Those dollars have been fully spended on those spent on those projects, so that's no longer included here. Um, fund 50 is our food service and Fund 80 is our community service. Our community service isn't a very active fund, but it doesn't include, for example, the FOBs that, mm -hmm. purchase the FOBs that get community members into the fitness center. We focus on Fund 10. It's the biggest portion of our budget. It's where most of the activity occurs. What's most important is we have a balanced budget for you. We've been forecasting that. It's not a surprise. Um, at high level, we pulled out most of the COVID-specific expenditures. There are a couple that still remain. For instance, we added time for a nurse um, throughout the pandemic, and those needs stay until that those costs are included. We've been forecasting that. But most of those um, pandemic-specific costs have been able to come out. Um, it does not include a bus purchase for next year. Um, it does still include staffing estimates. We have some hires still coming through and will, so we've entered estimates where we need to for those, and we will update as we know for sure. And then we do have some ESSER 3 fund, ESSER 3 funds budgeted. We've talked about the reading curriculum and such. So some of those are included, but not all of the dollars uh, are budgeted as we will be looking to use those later. Uh, for revenues, just a reminder that from the state level in the biennial budget, the two key ways that we get our revenue, uh, revenue limit and for people have local aid, the state said zero to an increase for people. And because we've been planning long term, we're fine. Other districts are struggling. The budget does include that variable. And then the biggest other for us especially is our open enrollment estimates. Um, it is still an estimate but and we will continue to update that. But we are, we do so well with open enrollment. We have so many families who don't live here who want to send their children here. So that's actually where we saw both in revenue um, and needed when the state had zero um, per people for the revenue limit for people categorical age. So just to give you an idea of where our general fund revenues come from, a majority of it is coming from the state revenue limit calculation and the state per pupil categorical aid. So nearly 80% is dictated by that formula. And just remember that the variables for those don't come in until our final, until September and October. So that's why we're saying it's still preliminary, even though our budget starts in another month or uh, month and a half. Open enrollment is, is key for us. Like I said, we do very well with that um, in terms of families wanting to come. And then we have small slivers in state, other state federal aids and, and other as well. But just this just reminds me how important the state formulas are and open enrollment to us. On the expenditure side, this will match up with your um, document as well. Over 90% of our budget is um, spent on instruction and support for instruction. So we're targeting our dollars towards servicing our kids, whether it's directly the teachers in the classroom or the supports, for instance, the guidance counselors. Like. This does include the Fund 27 transfer. Uh, so if, fund, if the special education fund isn't made whole on its own, which none in the state are, we, that instruction is counted here as well. So this isn't reflective in your budget document, but I think it's an important data point. It's just sub, it's just kind of cross-sectioning the data in a different way. Um, this is cross-sectioning it, what we call by object. And really the, what's important to me in this is that we're, set, that we're spending the majority of the district's dollars on the people who service our students each day. We do have other costs like utilities and services, 
we do pay make payments to other school districts for our students who open and roll out and we have others but the important part is we're spending our dollars on the people who service our kids so just a few other notable items um, our special education fund fund 27 we do have to use about six hundred thousand dollars of our general fund budget to make that whole each year the state does not provide enough funding to to fill our special education bucket. Um, fund 39 is where we're repaying our loan. Um, we do aim to manage the debt with the levy and the levy with the debt. So each time we can prepay, like we approved tonight, we actually generate more tax savings from equalization aid and it provides more tax savings in itself to the taxpayers. So that long-term strategy is beneficial. Fund 46 is our fund to save to maintain our facilities. Remember that that's where our cushion came this year, why other, some other districts struggled, because we had that transfer, we were able to, to reduce that. So this budget includes only a $40,000 transfer, where this year we were able to put about 300,000 in it, based on budget. Um, so that's where our cushion came. Uh, and then Fund 73 is not in your booklet, but just a reminder that that pays our early retiree and is self-sustaining. So a lot of good things that the district has done to look to today to put us in a better position than many other districts that I work with when I'm not here. So in summary, um, there are several key variables that we need in order to make this final. The state variables will come on there dictated schedule as per statutes. Uh, we won't get some of the key revenue limit ones until October. Uh, even some of the grant allocations, we don't find out for sure until summer. We're still working on estimates. And then for those formulas and for our budget, we also need things such as our student count, which happens in September, and then open enrollment and staffing. So a lot of unknowns, but we have made the best estimates where we can to be. Any thoughts or questions on that? Did I explain that okay? Yes, thank you very much. Very well. Thank you. It's been a lot of work that's gone into that. All right. If there are no questions, looking for a motion to approve the 22-23 preliminary draft budget as presented, please. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Roll call vote whenever you're ready. Right. Yes. Anderson, yes. Geske? Yes. Knifel? Yes. Ryan? Yes. All right. On the consideration of an audit contract with Whitley. I just have a couple more for you. <laughs> Pages 51 to 63 uh, is our proposed audit contract with, with Whitley. Just a reminder that we're required to have an annual audit, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. uh, and Whitley has done it for years. They do a nice job and like to continue. Like the cost of similar to what it's been. Yeah. Yes. Right. Any questions, comments, concerns? I'll motion. Okay. We have a motion to approve the audit contract with Whitley as presented. A second. <coughs> Roll call vote. Are ready for Henry? Anderson, yes. Gaskey? Yes. Knifel? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Right? Yes. On to consideration of an RW Baird contract for business management services. So we are going to, we, we'd like the board to approve uh, continued uh, contract services with RW Baird for business management, which is Debbie's time here with us. She does a fantastic job and we want to continue that uh, relationship with the school district. That also looks similar. Yep. Okay. At this point, we're looking for a motion to approve the Baird contract as presented, please. Motion. One second. Roll call vote Henry. Yes. Right. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Guest. Yes. Michael. Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, not going anywhere. That's right. So we're locked in. Okay. Next. Let's get. Now let's keep, 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 keep running through that one real quick. Right? Yes, Good job. Animation. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> it's not it's not in the contract. <laughs> For continued success. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Yeah. All right. 
on to consideration of approving a therapy service agreement for 22-23. So we are, we are looking for new uh, occupational therapy services as uh, um, uh, our current practitioner is moving on. So uh, we interviewed uh, BRC Therapy Services uh, for OT services and we'd like to approve their contract um, as uh, their contract for the 2022-23 school year. What did we have before? Um, um, is that functions? That was functions. What's the name of it? Yeah. And did a nice job. This the fee quoted in here matches the fee that we were paying to functions. Okay. All right. Any questions? No. Looking for a motion to approve the OT service contract with BRC as presented, please. Make the motion. I'll say. Roll call vote whenever you're ready, please. Right? Yes. Anderson, yes. Geske? Yes. Kneipel? Yes. Ryan? Yes. All right, on the consideration of the Chartwell contract renewal. So we uh, used Chartwells for a number of years, and on page 74 through 78, you'll see the contract uh, for their services this year. Um, and uh, we would like to, we during the, in the review uh, circle, we are in our renewal cycle. We're in the fourth year of that. We would like to continue our relationship with Chartwells, and having Val run that process for us would be uh, in, in the best interest of the district, we believe. Chartwells, do they determine what kind of food is provided to the students? They, they provide the um, menu items and there's a choice selection that, that then Val um, brings in. It's federally regulated though what they can get. I was going to say, yeah. I, I know, you know our lunches are, I mean they, they check all the boxes. Correct. But I was just wondering if like there's an opportunity us to like have somebody else and see if they offer a different type of menu or is that menu kind of just a stagnant menu that's kind of across the board at all schools? When we went to look at different uh, programs, they were very similar in terms of what would be provided. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the service that we get with Charles is fantastic. Okay. But, yeah. There are different packages you can choose from. Correct. You know, depending on what level you want to pay. And how and much that you want. raises the lunches for the Absolutely. students. Bring up yeah. Absolutely. Families. Yeah. Which is what we'll talk about. In, a little bit just in terms of numbers. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good question. Good question. Yeah. Any further questions? If not, looking for a motion to approve Chartwell, Chartwell's contract for 2022-23 school year, please. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. And Jill, roll call vote in your please, Anne Marie. Anderson, yes. Geske? Yes. Kneipel? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Right? Yes. On to consideration of the school breakfast and lunch prices for 22-23. Uh, I apologize that these had to be a handout. Yeah, your seats are, are two handouts related to this. There was one district in the cluster that, because meals were free this year, they didn't have their lunch prices out there, and I was hoping to include them in the comparison. And we even reached out to them, and they didn't contact us back, so they were just omitted from this. Um, but uh, just to, Joe will talk a little bit about our recommendation, but just to explain how these two work, these are consistent with what you've seen in the past. The, the first one without the graph. It's just a summary of the rates that we charged for breakfast and lunch. And remember last year, even though we had these prices in place, all of the meals were free to our students, as were the year before uh, due to the pandemic. And that was a federal thing with the reimbursement. So uh, another reminder with this, it's, man, it probably was 10 years ago now. Time goes so fast, but the federal government in implemented this PLE tool, and honestly, I don't even remember, can't tell you what it stands for anymore, but they started dictating whether or not we needed to raise our prices, do you recall that? Mm -hmm. So the last few years, we have met the requirements so that we didn't have to increase prices and we chose not to. This year, again, we met the requirements so that we do not have to. So that's good, it leaves the discretion up to us. 
So then the second handout here are the ones with the colors, and I wouldn't normally use color. Sorry, John. <laughs> but I do think the color is helpful in communicating these outputs. Um, <laughs> Only 24, Jeff. Only 24 copies. So the, the top one relates to breakfast, and it shows us compared to our cluster schools and how you can read it. Is anything in red, those would be prices that are higher than what we charge, and anything in green would be lower. And same with the graph down below. Any bar that you see above the middle, that means they charge more than we do for breakfast, which for breakfast is the majority of districts. And then any below would mean that they would charge less. And that same data is, is held true for lunch. So if you can look at this and generalize, we charge less than the cluster for breakfast, and we charge more than the cluster for lunch. It's easy read. Mm -hmm. So all that data was important as we came to you tonight with the, the recommendation for lunch prices. As, as we look into next year, just to, you know, seeing where people are at and where everything's at you know, from a uh, society standpoint, I think our recommendation at this point is to not increase anything mm -hmm. at all at this point. We could raise the, the breakfast prices to be more in line with where people are at, and just, I mean, but I wouldn't at all advise adding to the lunch prices, but uh, our recommendation as an administrative team is to keep everything the same for the year and then make a decision based on where everybody's at next year, to be real honest, so. I think this is gonna be an adjustment year because we're, according, now we have to charge again. Mm -hmm. Um, they've taken away the, the free lunches from the federal level. So I think it's it's two things. One, families readjusting in a time where costs have risen. And then I also think it's it's the determining then what does that mean for our program. Like, do all the students continue eating because they appreciate it now, or do some families adjust because now they're having to pay? So if we can, if you're comfortable with that, I think any family would appreciate that as well. We're looking at no, uh, no increase then uh, uh, for the 22-23 school year. That would be our recommendation. I'll motion that. So we have to actually put the prices in there for the motion, or when you say there's no increase? Same as 2021. Oh, just yeah. put, okay. So the motion is to approve the recommendation. Yeah. 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 Y
so that we can free up dollars to buy a bus. It, it is a time to add a bus to our rotation, take two out because of our reduced routes, and in the future, should we ever need to switch to contracted, they would right. correct, add it in. So um, we, in, in preparation for this, in order for it to be counted as a this year expense, it needs to be used this year. So we wanted to have our information ready um, just in case. And so we, we would like to move forward with this with your approval. Um, we can bring a budget adjustment next, next month, which will just move the dollars. Um, but with your approval tonight, they can get the bus here and in use to check all the boxes that are needed. So we're going to take two buses out, bring a new one in, mm -hmm. and we will still not be breaking budget. Is Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. And okay. yes, and where <laughs> you can see that back in the year to date is um, on page 34. Um, 10R78 dash. Mm -hmm. Okay. I had one question on the two trade ins. So one was a thousand and one was fifteen hundred for the two buses. That's Bring them to like a well, so I called today to check on scrap prices. I was going to say, scrap <laughs> prices are really high. So. Yeah, you can get anywhere between $135 to $150 a ton. Well, those buses are about 10 ton. So that one bus, we would make more by scrapping it than trading them. I don't know about the other. Obviously, the other bus is probably a wash. But I just can't believe we can't negotiate that with them a little bit where like, we can get scrap price the same as what you're getting for trading that you're going to refurbish and turn on sell to a, another busing company. Do you want us to pull that off? We definitely can look into that. Or we, historically, we've, we've traded them, but that doesn't mean we have to. Mm -hmm. If we scrap it, do we have to take it apart? I don't think so. No. We just well, well, they're they're looking at the hazardous. We can the 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 there's 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 some way in there. It's just to deal with just, it's it's ridiculous. Tires yeah. and yeah. the hazardous stuff. I think the last one we only got about 800, but scrap prices weren't where they were today either. And I do know like the catalytic converters, you know, the pricing of them. But these are all pre-2008. So starting 2008, they changed the regulations. So if we have a bus moving forward, you know, those catalytic converters are worth hundreds, if not close to $1,000. And then just taking that off of the buses and holding them at a separate price. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's plus time that we do. You might want to consider that. You know, like making it a thousand bucks or more. Yeah. Not deal, but, uh, yeah, absolutely. We, you know, we, we're not tied into um, just trading it in at all. You know, absolutely do that. No, I hate to just scrap it, but yeah. I don't want to lose money though either because right. for no reason. Right. We can do that with the, the current situation then that we did with the two buses. We could, let, we could look into that piece. Absolutely. Okay, so we'll do that. So we can still approve it. We'll, we'll just do the 107, and then if we end up. Yeah. Correct. And then we can report back to the board yeah. as to I think that's fine. Can we just Brian like look at and see if like the blue bus people are interested in anything and maybe they would buy it for twenty five hundred? I mean I don't know. We've we've had people pressure, interested, but. yeah, but we haven't we haven't actively sought out um, opportunities for that. And we can absolutely do that. We'll look at both. We'll Sounds look at the so scrap and post it on marketplace. No, probably don't want to do that. Uh yeah. I just I I feel I I, I'm kind of hesitant to put it out there as, you know, I mean, I'm just kind of hesitant to put it out there at okay. this point. But at the same time, if we can, I think the first choice for us in regard to this conversation would be to scrap it. And if we can't get that, then if, if we know people are interested, we can do that. But let's let's mm -hmm. take a look at both of those options. Okay. And then we'll Good. report back to you. I feel like we've had this conversation. Yeah. We'll we've been a little bit well, concerned right. about selling it outright to a community member and then having some and whole part and about it and then it's kind of like yeah. they have our school district done right, yeah. and, and then they're mad right, at us and right. we get I think just having a bus out there with our family. with our name on it and I mean you can take it off but what if they I don't think they have I mean, to it's like a, yeah, so, so we'll we'll take a look at all options then well, yeah, but I appreciate that it's good to look at yeah. the top dollar we can get yeah. so yeah. the the motion would be to Award the, award the bus bid, but at the 107 525 pending 
anything that we could get extra than what they're yep. looking at here for trade-in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that all right? Trace says that I'll take one so you're just saying you're without the trade-in, right? Without right. the trade-in, yeah. So, so then just, trade. yeah, they can just report back to us. Without the trade-in. Yeah. Yep. What, what if we, we decide that trade-in is bad? At least give us scrap price for yeah. trade-in, so and then you can still do whatever you want with it, but it's okay. so so high value for us. So could we do a motion where we're giving the administration discretion to, if a trade-in is better to go that route versus after the research has been done versus scrapping, et cetera? Can we do that? So I, think you're, I think your best bet, honestly, is to just a, a, approve, approve it at the 107.5.5 and just, we'll know, get what we can and get. then we'll get what we can get on the other side of it. And if we can't, then it, then the only thing that we're out is the 2,500, and then we'll just report back to the board that we're gonna do something else with it if we can. Does that make sense? So we're, we're looking for a motion to award the bus bus bid yep. to Mid-State Truck Service at 107.525. Is that right? Is that how we want to do that? Yep. Okay. I'll motion. We have a motion. Is there a second? A second. Real time, one of you ready, please, Anne-Marie. Yes. Ryan. Ray? Yes. Anderson, yes. Gesky? Yes. Thank you. Wasn't the previous plus heavy well was like 88 or 90? Yeah. So it hasn't gone as crazy as like a lot of other no. car pricing has, but it's still up there. Right. Yeah. It, it's funny. It's, I, I it's thought bigger. that was crazy. So it's interesting in that perspective, but. but. It's more. It's it, more. Yeah, yeah. it's more. Yeah, yeah, but not like through the roof ones. About, about the same too with all the other prices. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, wait. Not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. Never mind. All right. Or and a cons right. consideration <laughs> of awarding a pole pit. All right, Brad. All right. We are in need of replacing the pole vault pit out here. So we got a couple bids. Uh, Richie Athletics is substantially less than our other coach. We have a triple valley. So we're looking at um, proving that. Um, Basically, they, once we say yes, they can move over here and get it set up for us. So, um, the recommendation would be to go to Fuji Athletics for our pole. We have money in the budget for that? That's his athletic budget. Yeah. Yeah. We take care of it. I was going to say, because track and field, they do fundraisers and I suppose they have money in their budget for it, huh? Yeah. Okay. Is there any, any questions regarding? That. Does that include doing anything with the the pole the pole? I don't know what you call it, but the pole the ones oh, that they the use. Yeah, they have yeah, the plant. They would do the whole yeah. They re, or is that just the equipment? These pad. It's fully installed, isn't it? Like the whole thing yeah. 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 Well, it says pole pit. Yeah, that's the land. If you look on the back of page 19. But we have that resurface. Like, we have page 19. Four years ago. Four years ago. Yeah, so they do. So I don't know if that'll happen, but I don't know if that has to be changed or updated or any condition on that. But I think that was, I think it would still be in, in, in line with where they're at. But yeah. if, it's, if it's not looking like that, we can certainly have, right. and we, can, we can adjust that just on site with us. That would be something that we could do. And there's a 12 year warranty. <coughs> yes. okay. right. If there are no further questions, looking for a motion to award the portable pit bid to Richie. Make that motion. I'll second it. Roll call vote. Mary, please, Anne Ryan? Ryan? Yes. Ray? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Gaskin? Yes. Michael? Yes. On to policy and legislation. So uh, Courtney and Brock and I met uh, regarding some uh, language in all of our in the policies that are listed in here. This is the first reading. The biggest components that we did, if you look at pages 98 to 105, we're just making sure that um, we were consistent in the language 
when it comes to uh, the principal, I'm sorry, the superintendent or their designee and, and, and go from there because we're just cleaning up some language there. We'll clean up all the font and the spacing in the document as well, but those are the biggest pieces of uh, those components. <laughs> the other thing that we took a look at were um, solidifying the substitute teacher uh, and, and aid um, rates uh, to, to be in line with where we have been this year and kind of continue that so it wouldn't be a, an additional stipend, it would just be part of the overall sub pay. So if you want to take a look at those and uh, bring those, any changes, concerns to me or to Teresa or to Courtney or Brock prior to the next meeting, we would appreciate it. Can I ask one question? Yep. Um, the policy on gate receipts and admissions? Uh, page. And 102. Okay. Can you just explain briefly what our process is and who our designees or who handles our money, etc.? How that happens from the night of the event to somebody in the office depositing it? Sure. So we have um, ticket takers that are in, come in and count all the money out. Put it in the deposit. We actually deposit that night. Put it into, and then it gets put into our accounts from there. And then Rhonda goes back and forth and gets the deposit slips and things back to make sure that everything balances up. So it's it so at the end of the night, it goes from there to the Falkirk Bank. Yeah, the bank. Okay, and the are you talking about the gate? You were talking about the the, the, the gate. Their um, concessions. The you know money, whether it's in the football area or in the basketball area or the volleyball area, whatever just how, what that process is and I, I only mm -hmm. asked because there was some embezzlement in another school and mm -hmm. I just was kind of curious like what are our processes and do we have more than one person checking the list, mm -hmm. et cetera. Yeah, there's, it, for the, for the, the, the uh, gate receipts, there's two ticket takers matched up. The supervisor's also involved to make sure that everything's there and then gets deposited from there. Concession stand situation is a little bit different because it's not it's directly related. So, um, we do the same thing now. They're two different yeah. entities, too. Just so, you know, the gate receipts are different than the concession screen. But we do the same thing with the concessions. It's two people, one person counts it, another person signs off on it. And then there's a closer that takes it, and that goes, I believe, to the booster club. Right. Uh, no. Booster club? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. To you. Yeah. <laughs> but the closer yeah. usually always well, takes I mean, that to me specifically. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we do. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Not part of the contract. Well. That's right. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're uh -huh. So yeah. So there's always this uh, uh, another party or multiple parties involved yeah. in that process. Good question. I, I well, I knew we had a process in place, but I just for the last few years I haven't even thought about it. I thought, well, as long as we're yeah. looking at the policies, I just want to make sure that was clear to everybody. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing I would add is years ago we uh, implemented the the two to count and sign sheet. So even in the example of the ticket takers, they each count their own box and then the other person counts the corresponding box and they have to sign off that they they did the double. So and the supervisors there. So we, we wanted to implement something before we had issues so that we could prevent issues. Good. That's a good question. Any further questions? All right, moving on to planning, which is summer school update. So we have summer school numbers are coming in. Uh, we have, we're not in, at the uh, place that we would like to be when it comes to recruiting teachers to be in that spot, to be really honest, uh, but we're hoping to get at least two more teachers work, um, to help out at summer school. So if anybody knows any, any recent graduates that are interested in becoming part of the program, uh, we would love to have them and I can send out any information that you would need for that. We're also going to recheck with the, um, with the uh, universities to make sure that uh, they have all the information that they need and maybe we can get some graduates from them as well. So we'll keep going with that. Okay. More, more to come as we move forward in terms of numbers. Perfect. And then on to the summer projects update. I talked with Brian Holman today just to make sure we had our, 
our list ready for you. Um, in, in my eyes, it's not a, a super active summer, but uh, some, some things just for you to note. Um, there's some fen the fencing over here, the backstop for the, the kiddos area. Um, it has gotten kind of beat up and balls are slipping through, so he has that section of fence scheduled to be repaired. At the same time, he's going to get a quote for the perimeter around the football field and the, the baseball fields and such, not for work to be done, but there are some sections that need repair so that next summer we have some numbers to plan for. Uh, the bleachers in the high school gym, they're looking to fix the, the wheels on those so they roll in and out easier and then make platforms so it's easier for attendees to climb the bleachers and get to their spots. So not an overhaul of the bleachers, they're good, but making them a little bit more accessible. Um, the softball infield, making sure that that has the, uh, this is where my terminology is going to be wrong, top layer, <laughs> yeah, dirt. The, yes, the infield mix on the top is gone. It's gone, and so that will be layered up and done appropriately. The wood chips, need some so as you can see they are real big projects but you'll see them a lot of exterior he said a big interior one that he's going to get a quote on is the middle school gym it takes kind of a beating that's where our baseballs and softballs get hit so repainting it would freshen it up and that would be something that they hired that out last time and it worked best with our staffing levels and such so getting a quote for that and then the last thing he's going to get a, a quote for was not resurfacing the parking lot, but uh, filling the cracks, making sure that the moisture doesn't get underneath so that it lasts longest. So some projects on, on the agenda that are important, not, not earth moving, but important to you. Perfect. I actually was gonna just mention that I got a phone call from somebody that asked me, I, this was a weird month for phone calls. The curtain, I believe in the high school gym, because of the poor, you know, cold temperatures, something about they were throwing the discus into the curtain and the curtain was in quite bad shape. Are you familiar with anything like that? And is that something that can I, be cleaned I, or? I would say it's, there's marks on it. I think it, it, it's usable. I mean, it's, it's not in bad shape. It's so we have to look in the same piece. And so then this particular parent said, maybe the team that did that could clean it as their community service project. And I went, that's <laughs> not my area. <laughs> so but I'll pass year. it on. So, so it's been passed. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Any further questions? Comments? Concerns? All right, seeing none, we'll go move on to consideration of open enrollment applications for 22-22. If you take a look at the, the handout in uh, your that you have in front of you, open enrollment applications update, we did have to update one um, one additional piece in terms of open enrollment. As as you as we had indicated earlier, open enrollment is a big part of what we do here, and um, if we can provide programming for. A student then uh, we want to make sure that, that that we can do that if we can't then we do have to deny the open enrollment and if they go beyond the number that we have um, that we have allotted for particular grade levels uh, so we don't have to add staff with that then we want to make sure that that those would be denied as well so the motion is to prove all incoming and outgoing open enrollment applications except the following incoming applications 23 dash Zero four, and, and there, there's three of them that you can see. Um, uh, all indicated, there are those, those are individuals, but because of confidentiality, we don't uh, print any names. But those are the numbers. So we would ask the board to approve all incoming and outgoing open enrollment applications except those three individuals. And the reason is we do not have the programming available for those three individuals. We would have to add our own, we would have to add staff. Okay. Looking for that motion, please. Motion. Mm -hmm. Second. I'll second it. Good. Any further questions? If not, we'll call the next meeting, please, Henry. Thank you. 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 Thank
Ray? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Geske? Yes. Kneifel? Yes. Ryan? Yes. All right. On to, do you want to do the? Yeah, we'll go right away. We'll go middle, middle school. Okay. Right, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I'd like to, tonight we have two wonderful young ladies here that are going to help us out um, and talk about our eighth grade career exploration, our project-based learning. So um, this will all be kind of asked me to help find some businesses this this spring and um, Ellie Schroeder and Lauren O'Neill are going to talk about this um, and their experience and, and where they where they've traveled. I mean they're we're so lucky. I, I, the future's great here at Fall Creek High School. I hate to see them leave. And they're pro they probably can't wait to leave middle school, but uh, I call they're 8.9 graders right now because they're just about ready to ninth grade, That's but great. they've been great. They're so lucky, and they're going to be outstanding next year. You have the floor. Okay. Can we stand up? Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, we are presenting that. Oh, the 8th grade career exploration PDL field trips, um, which is a series of field trips we've been going on to help us think about our future careers. Each student goes on four out of the six field trips and takes a day to work on a project that we talk about a career that we really enjoy. Two thirds of the field trips. There are four field trips. <laughs> There are six field trips. Somebody goes on four of them. Okay, two days. Two days. Two days. Um, this was when we went to a nursing home to see how everything functioned there, um, and like to see if we potentially wanted to be in a, a career that might be around medical or like assisted living. This is when we went to a fire station um, to see law and public safety careers, um, not just like fire safety, but like policemen and lawyers, um, anything in that field. And I went on this one. This was when we, or I did not go on this one. You went on this one. I actually did not. But, um, I will talk about it. <laughs> um, uh, this is when people went to go see more about the medical field and um, see if that was a career they wanted to pursue. I went on this one, um, this was J&B Manufacturing. We learned about um, some agriculture things, design, um, working with heavy metals, and um, marketing and things like that to see if any students would like to pursue a career in that field. And we went to Chippewa Valley Home Builders Association where we met um, people that gave us tours of homes that they were building for, I think it's like a home crate or something. I don't know exactly. Yeah, home shape, no. um, but they showed us how they build them, plumbing, um, kind of how you pick a lot, and just for students who would like to pursue a career in maybe electrical or plumbing or building or anything like that. Um, these were the people that gave us tours and things like that. Um, um, and this field trip, we will actually go to going on tomorrow. Um, we are going to win technologies um, and learning about graphic design and stuff like that in those fields. And thank you, Mr. Goodman, for organizing all of this. <laughs> 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 Mr. Goodman just put that in at the end. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it's all about. So. I should have made a flash. You're right. Yeah, yeah. Stephen, I can teach you how. <laughs> Well, we truly appreciate uh, you coming and talking about it. What was the, what's the best? What was the best part of of the opportunity to see different things? Um, I think getting like a firsthand experience mm -hmm. in like careers you might want to pursue to see if you really like wouldn't like it or work. Mm -hmm. I got to see. I never thought that I'd be interested in a career with building fans, but mm -hmm. I thought that it was pretty interesting, and um, I got to learn a lot, even cool. though I might not pursue a career in that. I thought it was very interesting. Good. And I will say all the businesses, when I reached out to them, they were super, super excited um, to have um, the schools come and look. I think one of the connections with the workforce and our education, sometimes the business world feels like we're disjointed. Um, 
and they were super excited to have, have the students come and show what they're doing. Uh, from J&D, from the Chippewa Valley Home Builders Association, showing the trades and all the things that are involved. It's not just being a, uh, a roofer, but the marketing, the drafting, the engineering, that's all, that all goes into this. So, uh, there's a lot of neat things there. Grace Home um, was ex super, super excited. And then the wind technology, <laughs> you know, so if you're ever, winds will be exciting tomorrow. There'll be some graphics, but it's, it's like a James Bond movie. You know, you roll in there, there's like 100 TVs around, and there you monitor all the local internet traffic in the region. So all of our local telcos run funnel through with the wind network. They bought Globe University, but they use, they sit down in Banbury, um, but they're kind of an unknown company that a lot of people don't know about. Um, you know, basically your home internet travels through wind. They're a big um, provider of internet. So you find that out yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, that's so, good. Well, enjoy, right. thank you thank so you. much. Thank for you. Thank you. Fantastic. All right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so Ashley's up for it. Group of literacy and the science reading kind of together. Yep. They, they kind of touch sure. that stuff. Go so ahead. we just last week had our audit with School Cubed, and we actually had the owner of the company came in, so it was exciting. She's had just a ton of experience in literacy, um, and she gave us some hard and fast things that we can do now to really make an impact on our literacy in our elementary. Um, so that is a big push and a big direction we're looking at with the possible update curriculum um, coming up in the next spring. And just, it was eye-opening, just little things that she saw with an outside eye that we see every day, but she's looking for specific things. So um, we'll talk more with that with the, um, the curriculum committee. I'll give you more specifics what we learned and we'll come back with that too. So another thing, science of reading. Um, we are doing a pretty massive training in our elementary. It'll end up being 48 total hours of PD for our staff in the end. And we're actually going to start that um, on March or May 27th and just getting the understanding of the science of reading and um, just building that background knowledge so then we're going to roll into next year with really learning all the different components of what makes a reader and how students actually learn to read. Oh, and I know one more. Yep. Can I go to the next one? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we shared this with the curriculum committee to we have all of our resources and textbooks um, in order of when they were purchased or actually the copyright date of that. So we have some that are in need of updating. Um, our oldest one is from 1996. There's parts of that textbook that are used. So we have to go ahead to start looking at updating some of our resources. Um, it might not be a textbook because there's a lot of other good things out there than just a textbook now. So really it'll be social studies in the high school, middle school, and then um, reading or English in the high school and some middle school too. So we'll start trying to get some things updated and get on a pattern cycle of updating our resources for our students and teachers. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. On to Mr. Stratz. All right. Uh, first one is athletics update. So uh, middle school track is, is wrapped up already. So we have one taken care of and it's kind of tournament season here. So I'm just going to give you some dates. Um, I can email them to you too just uh, so you kind of know what's going on with the sports. Uh, Regional track uh, is at Mondovia Monday the 23rd, so next week is kind of the beginning of everything. Um, regional golf is at Spring Pines on the 24th. Uh, softball as regional here on the 24th. Um, and then baseball starts on the 26th. They'll be at Lacrosse Logan that, that night. And um, real soccer starts on the 31st, so it's kind of like the first round of playoffs and then obviously how things go for each of the teams. Uh, we also are going to move our athletic code meeting back to traditionally where we've done it. So it'll be on May 25th uh, at 7 o'clock so we can get everything rolling ahead of time for the, for the uh, fall seasons. Last year we had, because we didn't know what capacities and stuff, we ended up doing that like on August 1st, which made things a little, turn a little quicker for us. So we're glad to do that um, um, in the high school gym. 
And then the other thing that I had done was graduation plans. I just wanted to, to let you know everything is kind of back to the traditional, so we'll be in the gym, um, slideshow uh, for the students, uh, senior slideshow and spotlights and, and everything that we kind of couldn't do when we were outside. Um, and then of course we don't have to worry about the weather. I don't have to look at the forecast <laughs> quite as much you know, for Saturday. Uh, so I, I think the kids are pretty excited. And, and the thing that's nice about that is you're in an environment where you can do some really neat things. And so it's great that we're back in the gym. Um, and the backup plan, if we can't go outside of shaking hands, we'll be in the middle school again. Yeah, if I receive you more, other than that, it should be good. Any questions? If it's raining outside, we will probably go in the middle school gym to kind of have the, like the receiving line or congratulations of the graduates. Otherwise, we'll go outside. Okay. What time do we need to be there? You guys will. She's in, she's in and out. Oh, you guys will. Yeah. You know, 15 minutes ahead of time is fine. Um, unless you really want to check things out. But at uh, 1245, we'll kind of get you towards the back, like the two main entrances by the, by the commons. And then we'll kind of talk you through. One way, one way, one way. So just show up in high school yeah. Yeah. It'll be good. It'll be fun. 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 It'll be Yes, right. yeah. cool. yeah. 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 All my kids, yeah. 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 done by yeah. yeah. nieces and yeah. nephews. Yeah. 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 And I, there's a That's strong right. possibility yeah. was was my yeah. Yep. And did I do you? I I felt like I did yours. Not dating myself. She's a new grad. She's really That's right. Very excelling. That's fantastic. I love it. Good. All right, that was Teacher Appreciation Week. Well, we had a great Teacher Appreciation Week, and one of the cool things about Teacher Appreciation Week is that we, not that we appreciate everybody. Uh, everybody leads, everybody teaches in some capacity here, so we made sure that we celebrated our staff across the board and gave away some gift cards, did, a, uh, did the uh, snack card. We sent uh, notes home to all of our staff members. We sent notes home uh, and gift cards to our substitute teachers. So I thought that was really cool. We got, I have more. Uh, emails and notes from substitute teachers mm -hmm. in the last couple of days. I thought that was really cool. They, just, they reached out and said thank you for appreciating us. And you know, um, so every other year we try we try to also get a list of all of our alumni who are teaching or working in a school somewhere, and we're gonna we'll, you know send them uh, some stuff, and we'll do that again next year. So so we're in the off year for that. So, yeah, great great opportunity. Anything further? Any questions? If not, looking for a motion to convene to executive session for Chapter 1985, once the EO's got the at approximately 7 11. I make that motion. I'll second it. Roll call whenever you're ready, please, Andrew. Anderson, yes. Gatsby, yes. Nagel, yes. Ryan, yes. Right? Yes. So we are in full session.